Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. With that, Yasharallah, welcome. Giving all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. I want to go into your calling today. This is very important. It's a high topic. I want you to if you have a pen and paper, take out, you know, your pen and paper and write down these precepts to review on your calling. This is very important, people. So as always, I'm going to start with Colossians 3 and 17. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all. Baha Shama, Mashiach Kevashai. Give me thanks to the Most High and the Father, Baha Shama, Mashiach Kevashai. That's in the name of the anointed Savior. We thank the Most High for everything, because he's worthy to be praised for everything. He knows the past, the present, and the future. That's why we give him praise for everything. So I want to look at uh, Philippians, the third chapter and the 14th verse. This is very important, brothers. This is for your calling. It says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the Most High in a Mashiach which is Baha Shama Mashiach When you see in Christ Jesus, as it's written, that's Baha Shama Mashiach Yahushua in the name of the Anointed Savior. And that's how we reach the Most High. But he said in St. John 14 and 6, and he answered and said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way to show you how to follow the law, which is the truth that's going to lead to everlasting life. And no man coming to the Father but by me. So when you see in a Mashiach Yahushua or in Christ Jesus, as it's written here, that's Bahashama Mashiach Yahushua in the name of the Savior. So he says he's pressing toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of the most high Bahashama Mashiach Yahushua. So what is he saying? He's saying he's pressing toward the mark which is that truth which is Psalms 119, 142. That righteousness is an everlasting righteousness and thy law is the truth. So he's pressing toward keeping the laws of the Most High. He's pressing toward following the Mashiach Kabbalah who said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I'm the way to show you how to follow the truth. Because he did it. He followed the truth. So he's the way to show us how to follow the truth. He's an example. Telling us how we follow the truth. That's going to lead to everlasting life. And that prize is the kingdom. Brothers, that prize is the kingdom. The kingdom has promised to us. We the children of Israel. Look at Hebrews, the 12th chapter. The first verse. This is your calling. Hebrews 12 and 1. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight, every problem. Anything that would discourage you from moving forward toward the kingdom and the sin and the sin the trans which is the transgression of the most high's laws which does do easily beset us because the world right now is set up to send you straight to hell and have you to sin against the word of the most high and accept it because you don't fear the most high but if you do then you're going to follow what it's, your calling is called you to do and the sin which does so easily beset us and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. We gotta run with patience. Patience means this takes time. You gotta have patience, which is dealing with a certain amount of time. The race that is set before us. This race is set before us. It's beautiful. It says, looking unto a Mashiach. The author and finisher of our faith. You know, looking toward the Mashiach, going to the Most High, because he's the finisher of our faith. What we believe in. He said, you believe in the Most High. He said, no man come to the Father, but by him. How you going to get to the Most High that you believe in him? When he said, no man come to the Father, but by him. And he's speaking when there is no New Testament. Understand this. When he walked the earth in the flesh, there was no New Testament. So he's only speaking of what they had to go by, and that's the law and the prophets. Understand this. He's the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. He endured the problems that he had to deal with. 
despising the shame, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of the Most High. I mean, they spit on him, they, they took a crown of thorns in his head, hit him, hit him with that crown of thorns in his head till he bled. And what's to say how his life was before he even went to the cross? I went to the tree, they hang him on the tree. The cross just means the affliction that he had to go through and the shame that he had to go through. But he sat down on the right hand side of the most high. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. I mean, they couldn't come up with nothing against him because he didn't sin. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. That's why I went through, you got to be strong, Israel. Yasharala. Lest you faint in your mind. Your, how you going to faint in your mind? By thinking wrong? Following what it says in Ecclesiastes 3.24? But many are deceived by their own vain opinion, worthless opinion. And an evil suspicion is overthrown their judgment. Evil comes in and make you make the wrong decision. And the judgment so that you will have to be sit, thrown in the lake of fire. And what you gonna do then? But scream and holler. Continually, continually, continually. That's why it's very important. You say, you have not yet resisted under blood. You ain't resisted under blood. As he did striving against sin. Come on, you ain't resisted under blood, striving against sin. I'm not gonna do it. Most people say, hey, here it is, I'll do it. If it's pleasure, they're gonna do it. If it's something that they feel they're gonna get out of it, they're gonna do it. No, you got to let it go. Most I got something better for you. You got something better for us. You're going to hear in this calling. In your calling, Yasharala, a lot more better for us than what it is that you can see in this wicked world, concrete jungle. That you have not yet resisted in the blood, striving against sin. No. Nah. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as of the children, my son, despise not thou the chastening of the Most High. You don't despise the chastening of the Most High when the Most High checked you for something. Nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Don't faint, don't get weak when you're rebuked of him. That's why you got to be strong. And fear the Most High, don't fear nothing else. Because the Most High don't give you the spirit of fear. You're going to faint. Then you're weak. You're narrow-minded. But whom the Most High loveth, he chasteneth. See that? Whom the Most High loveth, he chasteneth. Think about it. This is the highest calling that you could be called into, and you're going to faint on it. And let somebody outside from understanding and knowing what you're supposed to know, if you've been studying, if you've been hearing these scriptures, these different topics that the Most High has brought out. You know, somebody or the world come in and the next thing you know, you done lost your right to be in the kingdom behind some wicked person of the world. Now you the enemy of the Most High. Now you in a war with him. But you think it's man. You think it's woman. You think it's uh, something, some entity of this world. No, you in a fight with the Most High. That's why James 4 and 4 says, if you are a friend of the world, you're the enemy of the Most High. You're at, you at enmity with the Most High. That means you're at war with the Most High. You are, if you're a friend of the world, you're an enemy of the Most High. So you can study all you want to, but you remember that you're an enemy of the Most High and you're at war with Him. He said, He tell you in, in Hebrews, let's go there. We ain't that far from it now. Just go back to Hebrews 10, 31. Just turn over a page. You'll see it's right here. He said, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. You hear that? It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living power. But some people think that the fear of the Most High is to do whatever you want to do and he's going to forgive you because you're still in the church mentality. Now, there's a judgment. And there are people in this world that are still following the judgments of the Most High in certain parts of the world. That's why America will be destroyed because they're not dealing with the laws that's commanded of the Most High. 
but certain places in this world they still dealing with it they live by it they try to stop stop it but they still go by them laws of the most high even if they're in another religion like Islam or so forth they still go by a lot of what laws that's in this Bible in certain countries go over there with all that madness that you do in here in America you be put to death stoned to death <laughs> It's still happening, people. It's going to happen again. Masha is going to set up righteousness on this earth. He's going to beat people down with a rod of iron. That rod of iron is the laws of the Most High. You don't want to accept it, you're going to say you're going to perish. Yeah, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Isaiah 60 and 12. Verse 6, for whom the Most High loveth, he chastens. So the Most High loveth, he going to chasten you, he going to check you. In his own way. And scourges every son whom he receiveth. You hear that? He going to scourge every son that he receiveth. Ain't nobody getting away with nothing. You're going to have to go through some pain. You're going to go through some suffering, some affliction. You're going to prove yourself worthy of the Most High, who I serve. Over you serve, same Most High too. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Is that if you endure chastening, if you endure the affliction, the chastening of the Most High, the Most High dealing with you as with sons, you know? You endure the chastening, you keep it moving, you don't stop, you keep rolling this truth, the Most High dealing with you as sons. For what son is he whom the Father chastens not? What son is it that the Most High don't chasten? Going through something. But if you be without chastisement, but if you be without chastisement, then what? Well, of all our partakers that's rolling in the truth, the real truth, then are you bastards, fatherless children, and not sons. Hear that? So you're looking at, you got to look at this. We're going through chastisement. And the ones in the world not going through the chastisement that we might go through being in this truth. That make you think, doesn't it? I mean, it still won't coincide with everything. They're going to get theirs, though. Because their names are going to be written in the book of life. So where are they going? Into the lake of fire. See, he's chastening us. He's working with us to make us perfect. To make you a son of the Most High. But if not, then you a bastard. I call you bastard. Listen, he said, but if ye be without chastisement, you be without chastisement that's coming from the most high. Well, all our partakers, you hear that? And all of a certain number are partakers. Then are ye bastards. He ain't none of yours. You ain't none of his. And not sons. See? Romans 9. Say you ain't none of this son. Romans the ninth chapter. It's all about your calling. Romans 9. Romans 9 and 23. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Now we the only vessels of mercy, the children of Israel. He only showed his mercy unto the saints, his grace unto the saints. That's wisdom of Solomon 3 and 9, and wisdom of Solomon 4, 15. So he saw his riches, which is understanding his word of his glory, the glory of the kingdom, on the vessels of mercy. We the children of Israel, one third, mind you, which he had afore prepared unto glory. You hear that? He prepared us in the glory of four, before we was even born. Even us. Listen, even us, Paul is saying. Even us, whom he have called. See? Not of the Jews only. Not of the tribe of Judah only, he's saying. But also of the Gentiles. So, what does he call himself here? For those that have ears to hear. And a mind to understand. And eyes to see. Even us, he said, even us, 
whom he have called, not of the Jews only, not of those that rode with Amashiach, I was seeing him on the earth, the tribe of Judah, only, but also of the Gentiles, see, also of the Gentiles. So he's putting himself in at us, even us. He's talking to them. Who he's talking to? Romans 1 and 7. Romans the first chapter, 7 verse. To all that be in Rome, be loved of the Most High. And Romans 9, 13 says, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, called to be saints. And the saints are the 12 tribes of Israel. Grace to you and peace from the Most High, our Father, the Most High of power who? Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the Mashiach Yahweh Shai. So you look at, all you got to do is look at, define the saints. Psalms 148.14. It says to the saints. Psalms 148. <coughs> 14. The definition of the saints. He also exalted the horn, which is the power of his people. The praise of all his saints. Who are they? Even of the children of Israel. Who are we? A people near unto the Most High. Praise ye the Most High. So, that's who the saints are, the children of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel. So, it's when you go back to Romans 1 and 7, you can do this for all the books in the the New Testament. It says, To all that be in Rome. Romans 1 and 7. Beloved of the Most High, called to be saints. So it's talking to the children of Israel. Period. So, that's why he's saying, and it's very important that you see how he's talking to the Israelites that's in Rome. Calling themselves what? Romans. Like you in America calling yourself Americans. But they are, these are Israelites. Just like you are Israelite, you might call yourself what? A Gentile. That's why he's saying just Paul would be a Gentile to uh, Peter and uh, Matthew, Mark, and Luke and all the apostles. Because he wasn't there with them. Shot, that was shot. So he looked at the other ones uh, that were scattered among the other lands as Gentiles. Quickly, we can prove that and uh, go to St. John 7, 33. That's what they call him. It's uh, yes, seven thirty-two. Say that seven thirty. Then said, "I must have said to them, Yet a little while am I with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. Ye shall seek me." So he said, "I'm going to the Most High." He said, "You shall seek me, and shall not find me. And where I am, thither ye cannot come. So where I'm going, you can't come." Then said the Jews among themselves, "Whither will he go?" That we will not find him. And I'm here to show you about these Gentiles. Will he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles? That's what we, the children of Israel, that were scattered among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. See? The Israelites were considered Gentiles, which is Goyim, which is Goyim in the Hebrew, which means nations. And we are 12 nations that make up one nation. That's why Paul is saying, in Romans 9 and 24, even us, whom he have called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. See, he's speaking to the Israelite Gentiles in the book of Romans. He said, in his show, he says, as he said also in Hosea, it says, Hosea, 
But that's Hosea. I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. It said, and it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living power. It's your calling. And you being called the children of the living power. Where's that at? Hosea 1 and 10. That's what I say. When you read the New Testament, you have to understand that there is no New Testament. There's only the law and the prophets that they had to go by. They were going by the law and the prophets. That's why he's, he's repeating, he's quoting what it is that Hosea said. Hosea 1 and 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea. That's a lot of children. A lot of multitude. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass, as we just read, that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people. There it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living power. So look at us. We, we taught that we Gentiles. We've been grafted in. Don't know who you've been grafted in among. Because you ain't asking. You see? But we tell you that you're the sons of the living power. As it is written. The children of the living power. Go back to Romans 9. <clears throat> Verse 27. Isaiah also cried concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Yeah, that remnant shall be saved. Though we be, you know, have you ever picked up some sand? Just one handful of sand and just drop this a lot. That's how we say we are in number. But he says only a remnant shall be saved. Only one third of The Israelites are going to be saved. Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. Only a remnant going to be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. Here they're going to cut it short in righteousness. That righteousness is keeping of the laws of the Most High. Those that do his laws, statutes, and commandments, follow his rules and regulations. That's who's gonna be he gonna make it short for. Because a short work will the most high make upon the earth. You know? He said it's a short work he's gonna make upon this earth. Hold that. Get Matthew the 24th chapter. In verse 22. He said, and except those days should be shortened. It'll be a short work. He's gonna shorten it because of this. And except those days should be shortened. There should no flesh be saved. If he ain't sure these days, they're going to kill everybody. Through the air, the food, the medicines, the water, you name it. He said, and except those days should be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The day is going to be short for the elect's sake. Look at 2 Ezra 2 and 13. 2 Ezra 2 and 13. Now when they live so wickedly, <laughs> yeah, that's, you done it. <laughs> Second Ezra is two and thirteen. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you, that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. you hear that? Watch, he said. We'll read to again. Say, go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you, 
that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. The kingdom is already prepared for us, y'all. He said, watch. Now, go to 2nd Ezra 8 and 51. 2nd Ezra 8 and 51. But understand thou for thyself, and seek out the glory for such as be like thee. For unto you is paradise open, the tree of life is planted, the time to come is prepared. He's telling you. It's prepared already. Plenteousness is made ready. A city is built. You can read about New Jerusalem in Revelation. And the rest is allowed. The rest is going to be allowed in Isaiah 14, chapter 1 to 3. Yeah. Perfect goodness and wisdom. So the root of evil is sealed up from you. Weakness and the mouth is hid from you. And corruption is fled into hell to be forgotten. Sorrows are past, no more sorrow. And in the end is showed the treasure of immortality. Living forever and ever and ever. That's what's promised to us. But some people like this world think they're going to just enjoy this world. You're going to die with this world. Cause it's set up to send you straight to hell with it. You got a choice. Choose life or death. Some people already chose death. Because the things that they do, the law says put them to death. So what you going to do? You, how you going to, how you going to, like it says, the old saying, you lead a horse to the water, but you can't make them drink. Most I said, hey, go tell my people. So they ain't going to hear you, though, because they won't even listen to me. That's something. That's something. Going back to Romans 9 chapter and verse 28, he says, For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness. You hear that? He's going to cut it short in righteousness. That's why you hear us saying you got to repent and come back to the law, set your commandments of the Most High, and follow them and do them. Because a short work will the Most High make upon the earth. And he's coming quickly. And as Isaiah said before, except the Most High of Sabbath, had left us a seed. We had been as Sodom and been like unto Gomorrah. That's we'd been like Sodom and Gomorrah. You see what he, what they was doing to Sodom and Gomorrah. I mean, it's like like that right now. If not worse, here in America, anytime a man can marry a man, a woman can marry a woman, and children is being taught that it's okay. That's okay. That's a great way to be. Romans 1 and 9. This is what he's quoting from. That's why I tell you, when you read that New Testament, you got to know the Old. Because they're repeating what it is that is written in the Old Testament. Pretty much. It says, Isaiah 1 and 9. Except the Most High of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant. You know, a very small remnant. Remember he said a remnant? Now it said a small remnant. We should have been as Sodom. And we should have been like unto Gomorrah, because they pushing that wickedness that they were doing in Sodom and Gomorrah all over the world. Romans 9, 28. No, verse 30. What shall we say then? That the Gentiles, which followed not after righteousness, have attained to righteousness? So the Gentiles, the Israelite foreigners, Israelite that's dispersed as we read about. That are considered Gentiles. And a lot of you out there are Gentiles today. But you're really the children of Israel. Negro, Indian, and Latino descent. Not all, because all Israel is not of Israel. But those that feel the Spirit and say, Yeah, I am the chosen of the Most High. And start to come and learn this truth. And endure until the end. He said, What shall we say then? That the Gentiles which follow not after righteousness, follow not after keeping the law, statutes, commandments, and the most high, have obtained the righteousness, even the righteousness which is of faith, even the righteousness which is of faith, believing in the most high, through Baha Shama, Mashiach, Yavashai, but Israel, which follow after the law of righteousness, those that were following the law of righteousness, keeping the laws of the most high, have not attained to the law of righteousness. They have not attained to the law of righteousness. Wherefore, because they sought it not by faith. They ain't seek it by faith. You got to have faith in the Most High. Baha Shama Mashiach Yahweh That's why he said in, in St. John 14 and 6. I am the way. 
to show you how to follow the truth, which is the laws that's going to lead to everlasting life. No man coming to the Father but by me. So if he's saying that there is no New Testament, for all you New Testament buffs, he's saying that in John 14 and 6, then what was he talking about? He's talking about those that was believing in him from the beginning. Had faith in him going to the Most High. Say, no man come to the Father but by me. You think that's just because he's saying it then? No, it's been that way. That's why David said in Psalms 110 and 1, The Lord said unto my Lord, Sit thee on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. So what is David saying? The Most High said unto my power, Amashiach Yahweh Shai. Who's Amashiach Yahweh Shai? David's power. Sit thee on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. We just read where Amashiach Yahweh Shai is on the right hand of the Most High. Come on, don't take a rock of science to figure this out. It's the simplicity of Amashiach. The coming of volume of the book is written of him. In the Old Testament, he's a spirit. He's an angel. It's the same angel that was in Genesis 1 and 1, Genesis 1 and 2, Genesis 1, 26. Let us go down and make man in our image and our likeness. That's a most high of Mashiach, I was I mean, and he disappeared? He just vanished until he came in the flesh? No. It's been there. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Most I told you that, but you're going to try to make something new? No. I said, well, you can say this is new. It's not new. It's been already of old. Just understanding what's not there. It's a mystery. So wherefore, verse 32, wherefore? Because they saw that not by faith, but as it were by the works of the law. See, they just I'm doing a lot, a lot, a lot, a law, but no faith. You know, Mashiach Yahweh Shai going to the most on our behalf. Those that did, that's that remnant, that very small remnant that he's talking about, they're going to be this very small remnant. For they stumble, listen, for they stumble at that stumbling stone. Hear that? They stumbled at that stumbling stone. What's he talking about? The brothers in the Old Testament. They stumbled at that. Is he talking about someone in Revelation that's going to read Revelation? No. He's talking about those of old. Paul was a Pharisee himself. He knew. See, verse 32, as it is written, Behold, I lay in Zion, which is the twelve tribes of Israel, a stumbling stone, and rock of offense, and whosoever believeth on him, that stumbling stone, that rock of offense, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. You see this? You see, people not really tapped into sin that is talking about Mashiach Yahweh Psalms 118, 22. Psalms 118, 22. <coughs> the stone which the builders refused to become the headstone of the corner. This is the most high doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. You see that? So. Matthew 21 and 42. Matthew 21 and 42. And my Savior said unto them, Did ye never read in the scriptures the stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner? This is the Most High's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say I unto you, the kingdom of Most High shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth fruits thereof. Straight up. I mean, telling them. Whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken. But on whosoever it fall, shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard his parables, he talked about himself. They perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. See, but you see what he's saying here. And you go to Isaiah 8 and 14. Isaiah 8 and 14. Stony stone and a rock, right? Isaiah 8 and 14. And he shall be for a sanctuary 
but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, the northern tribes and the southern tribes, <coughs> all twelve tribes, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared, trapped and be taken. See, He's letting you know that. Uh, 1 Peter 2 and 8. First Peter 2 and 8. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. Even to them that stumble at the word, being disobedient. Whereunto also they were appointed. See? They don't understand it. This is real. I go to uh, 1 Corinthians. So we can continue on this. I mean, I can continue. I'm going to preach something too much. But if we don't go to 1 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, I'm going to read 1 to 4. It says, My old brethren, 1 Corinthians 10, My old brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Don't be not knowing this. How that all our fathers were under the cloud. All our fathers were under the cloud. Talk about in the wilderness. And all passed through the sea, the Red Sea, and we came out of Egyptian captivity, all twelve tribes. And were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And did all and did all eat the same spiritual meat. And did all drink the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock. That spiritual rock, that spirit, that was a rock that followed them, which is the foundation, and that rock was a Mashiach. Come on now. Can't get no clearer than that. Can't get no, we can't get no clearer than that. I don't know where you're going to go if you're going to try and say it means something different. Romans 9, 23, as it is written, this shall call in Yasharala. Behold, I lay in Zion, in the twelve tribes, a stumbling stone, a rock of offense, and whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. There it is. So, that's a Mashiach Yahweh Shach. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians 1, 23. Then we're going to jump to verse 26. But we preach a Mashiach crucified unto the Jews a stumbling stone, a stumbling block, and unto the Greeks foolishness. See? There it is right there. A Mashiach, I would say that stumbling stone block. That stone. Verse 26. For you see your calling, you see your calling, brethren. How that not many wise men after the flesh, not many wise men have their doctorate degree in this world after the flesh, not many mighty, not many mighty men, not many noble, not those that's involved with politics, are called, are called. But the most I have chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Foolish things. I mean, we the foolish things. We fools for a Mashiach Yahushua namesake. To the glory of the Most High. Foolish things of the world to confound, confuse the wise. And the Most High have chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. I mean, come on. We the Israelites, shoot. They look at us the, as the lowest of the world, man. Things that are not, that have to be us. Because we are like not existing except for whenever it is that we bring forth the truth in front of someone and they want to try to come against us or try and say something negative. But they say the negative against the Most High and the Mashiach of Shaka. We come with the word of the Most High, whether you receive it or not. You got to deal with the Most High on that because he's the one that had holy men write this. First, we went to the seventh chapter. 
in the 20th verse. 1 Corinthians 7 and 20. Let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. See, brothers be jumping all around this place, that place, this place, that place. Say, let every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called. Say, whatever it is that the Most High brought you into, or however you come in, you might have something that you are brought in as far as, you know, being in the body of a Mashiach outside that you do, continue to do that, perfect that, or you have something perfected in the world, the most I call you into this truth, perfected in the truth. You know, with the whatever camp or whatever church or whatever you've been called into, he said, hey, did every man abide in the same calling wherein he was called? Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. You a servant? You know, and every one of the leaders should be servants. We are servants to the people. We give our life so that people can be under the understanding of the voice of the Most High and the Mashiach of Shai being the word of the Most High to hear and understand and apply this word in your life that you can see the promise that we already said it's prepared for us it's just we're going to get it together to show that we're worthy for the preparation that's been prepared for us that we can receive it Art thou called being a servant? Care not for it. But if thou mayest be made free, use it rather. You know? Be ready for it. For he that is called in the by Shema Mashiach Yavashai being a servant is the most highest free man. You hear that? You're the most highest free man doing this work, bringing it to our people, serving the people. Likewise, also he that is called. Being free is a Mashiach Yahweh Shai's servant. Hear that? You call. Being free of what? Being free of the, the, the being dumbed down, being impotent in this world, your mind not knowing the truth. Understanding the moral laws, the civil laws, the dietary laws, the ceremonial laws. Understanding them and applying them in your life. In living to the glory of the Most High, that you can see this kingdom that's prepared for us. We didn't read about it. It's already prepared, people. All we got to do is get ourselves together. That's what he's waiting on. You know, he say, You are bought with a price. Be not you the servants of men. You hear that? We bought with a price. So don't be servants of men. Serving man, better know it. Better know what you're supposed to know, so you can be serving the Most High. You know, Mashiach that was shy, by Hashem, Mashiach that was shy. You are bought with a price. That price is the precious blood of a Mashiach that was shot. That he shed his blood for the sins of the twelve tribes of Israel. That's why he say repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins in Acts five and thirty one. Brethren, that every man wherein he is called, therein abide with the Most High. I want you to abide with the Most High. Now concerning, excuse, that's all I want right there. But that's from there we're gonna look at uh, 1 Corinthians one and ten. 1 Corinthians one and ten. Now I beseech you, brethren, by the name of our power, Mashiach Yahweh Shai, by a sum of Mashiach Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Anointed Savior, that you all speak the same thing, and that there be no divisions among you. 